as our college students have gone back to school in these past couple of weeks, so have seminarians who are studying to be priests, they also go back to school. And this is one of their first weekends in the seminary. So I think of all those guys who left for the very first time. They left their families, they left their jobs, they left their former ways of life. And the first Sunday comes and the gospel, or the, uh, the first reading, you duped me, Lord. You were too strong for me, and I let myself be duped. And after I heard that my first year at the seminary, I left for a couple of years and uh, <laughs> took a little bit more time to think about it, and then I ended up going back. But, um, but it happens that we do feel that, Lord, I am listening to you. I am asserting your call. And then the bottom drops out. You duped me. How could you let this happen to me? I didn't think there was any suffering in this. I think that happens in marriage vocations. That happens in the priesthood. I didn't sign up for this. You duped me. But then as we continue the reading, it says, what I tried to say, I tried to be angry. I tried not even mention your name anymore. But there's a burning deep inside of me. I know that you're still there, and somehow you're going to carry me through. I feel as if I've lost everything. But still, for whatever reason, Lord, my soul is still yearning to be with you. We can't turn on the TV this week without seeing the devastation from Hurricane Harvey. People that have lost everything. They don't even have dry clothes. And they're relying 100% on donations of people. Water. Things that they never even dreamed that they'd be longing for. They're in devastation in such need. Lord, you duped me. I was living in my life. I was on autopilot. How could you do this to me? Why is all this suffering happening? Take it away. What does Jesus say in the Gospel? He says to Peter, I must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer greatly. And I'm going to be killed. And on the third day, I'm going to be raised up. And Peter says to him, Lord, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Suffering is bad. You don't want to suffer. Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as humans do, but as, no, not as God does, but as humans do. There is suffering in all of this. There is suffering when we're going to be following God's call. But we as human beings don't like to hear that. We like to have all flowers at all times and always be on easy street, but suffering is a part of it. And I think we know why. Because when we do suffer, when the bottom drops out, when we feel like we lost everything, only then do we feel that burning and realize that none of this stuff matters. The gift of our life, the gift of the Spirit within us, and our longing to be with God is all that matters at the end of the day. Our hearts are burning until they rest in you, Lord, as St. Augustine says. So next time we feel like we've been duped, we feel like we're suffering, we're in such agony, if we open our minds up a little bit more and say, the Lord's trying to show us where he is in the emptiness, in when we feel like we're at the rock bottom, he is there because he is carrying us through. That burning is deep within us. He doesn't abandon us. He's just drawing us closer to himself. And sometimes we feel like we're duped and we feel like we're suffering. But in that, even that, he's drawing us closer to himself.